Hello students, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to cover one of the most important and expected topic under operating system that is critical section problem. So we will start with the introduction of critical section problem, solution to this problem and also we will cover the working of critical section. So in the operating system lecture series, this is our lecture number 14 that is very important and if you forgot to watch previous 13 lectures, you can check the description box. I have already added the link there. So, let's start with the introduction part. So, critical section is nothing but it is a problem that is used to design a protocol. It is a problem that is used to design a protocol followed by a group of processes so that when one process has entered its critical section let's say when one process has entered its critical section no other process is allowed to execute in its critical section okay so critical section is a part of program which tries to access the shared resources in the last video we have discussed let's say we have three processes and these three processes have a common shared resource all the processes wants this particular resource for some time to execute their working so critical section is the part of that program let's say critical section is part of this program which tries to access this shared resource shared resource may be any cpu any memory location etc the critical section cannot be executed by more than one process at the time what does it mean is let's say we have three processes when process p1 is in its critical section then process p2 or p3 is not allowed to enter its critical section that means only one process at a time can enter or can execute the critical section so operating system faces the difficulty in allowing and disallowing the processes from entering the critical section that is why it is called the critical section problem and to solve this problem we have multiple methods we have multiple theorems that we will cover in the in this video the atomic action is required in critical section that is atomic action means only one action is required that is only one process and can execute its critical section at a time and all the processes have to wait to execute in their critical section let's say let's take an example process p1 p2 and p3 process p1 wants the shared resource this is shared resource CPU, let's say, okay, for 10 seconds. Process P2 want it for 15 seconds and process P3 want it for 5 seconds, okay. So, whenever a process P1 is going to use this shared resource and it is in its critical section, then P2 and P3 has no access for the same for the same critical section at the same point of time. And to resolve this problem, we always need some solutions. We always need some solutions like mutual exclusion, hold and wait. We have so many methods that we are going to cover in this video. Also, critical section refers to the segment of code. So, critical section is what it is. A segment of code where processes access shared resources such as common variables, some files and perform some read operations on them. Since processes execute concurrently, any process can be interrupted mid-execution. Yani ki, all these processes are going to execute simultaneously. Lekin kyunki critical section problem agar beech mein ho jati hai, so any process, kisi bhi process ki performance ko, we can stop in between of its execution. So this is, a, this is the major problem that we are facing while using critical section. Critical section is used to solve problem of race condition occurring due to synchronization. So, we will cover this in the video. So, what is race condition? Race condition leads to inconsistent state of data. Leads to inconsistent state of data 
therefore we need a synchronization protocol we need a synchronization protocol that allow processes to cooperate while manipulating shared resources which especially is the critical section problem so i hope it is clear to all of you why we need race condition why race condition while race condition occur how we can resolve this problem okay so we have now an example over here okay so in this example what we have is we have a process we have a process and a process has multiple portions okay first is non critical section entry section critical section exit section and again non critical section this is what this is the central part of every process theek hai now let's just discuss all these things one by one okay so first we have is entry section this section above the critical section is always known as the entry section and the process that is entering the critical section must pass this particular phase so jo bhi process critical section mein enter hone wali hoti hai that must enter the entry section first what is the exit section the section below the critical section is the exit section and every process has to go through this section once okay uh, one we also have the remainder section the section below the exit section is called the remainder section and this section has the remaining code it has the remaining code that is left after the execution so after the execution the data left the code left we have is saved under is stored under the remainder section of the process okay next point we have is solution to the critical section problem so we have solutions like mutual exclusion progress and bounded waiting so mutual exclusion means what when one process is executing in its critical section let's say when one process is executing its critical section no other process is allowed to execute in that section at the same time that is called mutual exclusion another is progress so when no process is executing in its critical section and there exists a progress Uh, sorry there exists a process that wishes to enter its critical section it should not have to wait independently to enter it okay let's say process p1 wants to enter its critical section then and it is using when progress that means critical no no process is there under the critical section and the process p2 does not need need to wait for the critical section to get free okay it there will be no waiting queue over here so when no process is executing in its critical section and there exists a process that wishes to enter the critical section it should not have to wait to enter it that is called progress next is bounded waiting so there must be a bound on the number of times a process is allowed to execute in its critical section after another process has request to enter the critical section and before that request is accepted so this is called the bounded waiting okay so all these types are very 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 important i hope everything is clear to you so remember one point students ki mutual exclusion and progress are taken under the primary solution bounded waiting and architectural neutrality are the secondary solutions okay so bounded waiting means we should be able to predict the waiting time for every process to get into the critical section the process must not be endlessly waiting for getting into the critical section means whenever a process let's say this is the critical section 
process p1 is using it process p2 p3 and p4 are in waiting queue okay and if process p1 also wants to go to the waiting queue then hamare system mein ye automatic hona chahiye ki wo bata de ki process p5 ko kitna time lagega kitna wait karna hoga taki wo pata kar le ki hame critical section mein jana hai ya nahi kyunki isme endless waiting nahi honi chahiye next we have is architectural naturality our mechanism must be architectural natural it means that if one solution is working fine on one architecture then it should also run on another ones as well so both of them are the secondary solutions and these two are the primary solutions of critical section problem i hope students everything is clear till now if you have any doubt you can comment below i will definitely help you so thank you so much and i wish you all